few days ago, I found myself working in Fusion 360, designing an adapter for one of my cameras. Um, it's basically a piece that would go on the front of a filter, so it has very fine pitched metric threads. And uh, Fusion 360 doesn't have uh, those thread types in their library. Um, so I racked my brain trying to figure out how to do this. I did a lot of searching on the internets, um, a lot of pain and suffering, and uh, figuring out how to create these threads. And uh, I documented the process so uh, you don't have to go through all that. So let's check it out. If we go through here and take a look at uh, what Fusion says to do, there's a couple options. So if you're on Windows, you're in luck because there's actually a plugin available that you can use to create custom threads. And it basically takes the manual process out of what we're getting ready to do. Um, because unfortunately, I don't have Windows. I have a Mac. Um, pause for laughter. Um, but uh, turns out it's uh, an annoying process to go through here and one, find the place you need to change and then actually change uh, the things you need to change. So let's walk through uh, on the Mac side what that looks like. So um, you'll see this long um, path down here for Mac OS. Uh, if we break that down, it's not as daunting as it might seem, although it seems incredibly redundant. But um, we'll go through this first part. Uh, not so bad so far. So we're looking for uh, essentially the application support directory. Uh, and that's easy enough to get to. So um, the, the thing that we're uh, not able to do easily, uh, and we can't just cut and paste, is this version specific ID. So this is a GUID that is going to be dependent on the version of uh, Fusion you have, and that changes pretty regularly uh, since they update that quite frequently. So um, you know that when you go into that folder, there's actually gonna be, uh, more than likely there'll be several of them. And you know the question is which one do you pick? You could probably look at the the most recent one. That's probably a good a good guess. But really, the best way is if you go look at the uh, Fusion 360 alias and you right click it and select Get Info or uh, Command I if you're uh, high speed. Um, you'll see that it will point you to the original um, target of that alias. <laughs> Uh, and uh, if you just triple click in that window and uh, command C, uh, you can copy that and then paste it into um, Finder. And really uh, the way to do that is command shift G or uh, I think it's uh, edit go and uh, paste that with a command V. And that gets you into the folder and we can continue our journey down the long path to, um, to the uh, file that we need to change. So if you right click Fusion and select uh, Show Package Contents, uh, we'll see here, we'll walk this tree. Um, you know, a lot of Fusion up in here. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, we get down to the point where we need, uh, the folder we wanna look at is thread data. So once we get into thread data, um, there's gonna be several uh, XML files in here and these, each of these are a collection of uh, different types of threads. Now. I know that my thread is a metric thread and it's an isometric thread. So uh, what Fusion recommends doing is just copying one of these um, XML files and then modifying it to suit your needs. So I'm gonna copy the isometric profile and I'm just gonna leave the name the same, doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, let's open that up in your favorite editor. And uh, if we take a look, and see what that looks like. Um, so it's not so bad, uh, but I don't know what any of this stuff means. I mean, I, I know what a diameter is. Um, you know, it's not too tricky to figure out, but let's get rid of a lot of this extra stuff. I'm only gonna create one thread. I wanna see if it works um, and then go from there. So if we um, first get rid of everything, but uh, the definition of a single thread, so that's what this looks like. And then I'm not gonna do different classes, so I can get rid of those. And what we're left with is just really three dimensions we need to know. The major diameter, the pitch diameter, and the minor diameter. Um, so, well, how do we figure out what that is? Um, well, turns out um, there are definitions of this, and if we look at a photographic filter, which this is the component I'm trying to replicate is the threads on a, on a filter, um, 75 millimeter pitch. So 
so far so good. So now uh, what we need to figure out is um, how do we get that? How do we get those other dimensions? Uh, the formulas here, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not that complicated, but um, I want immediate gratification. So I found uh, this site after some Google searching and it has a calculator where you can put in essentially your, your basic diameter and it will uh, dump out the three diameters that we need for our thread. So uh, in this case, we're looking for 67 millimeter um, and the thread pitch. And we just pop those in there and uh, we just hit compute. Uh, you can play with tolerances if you need to. Um, I 6G is gonna be the looser tolerance, which is what I'm going for. Uh, this isn't trying to hold a liquid, it's just trying to hold a, an adapter onto a camera, so it's gonna be tight enough and I don't want to fight with it, so uh, this should be just fine. Um, now I actually don't know the difference between uh, these two sets of diameters, so you've got the slash, and to the left you have one diameter, and to the right you have another. Um, I chose a tighter one, so I used the uh, left-hand side. Figured, you know, that's that feels, feels right. Uh, so let's see... Uh, let's see what that looks like. So if we go back to our favorite editor again, um, and we continue on our path here. We'll just plug those numbers in real quick. Um, and then the other thing we'll want to do is we'll want to make sure that we uh, give this thing an accurate description. So right now it's still got the description of whatever thread I was editing here to use as my template. So let's go ahead and go through and modify all that. And then we'll give this a new name so that when we go into Fusion, um, you know, we won't have a conflict. I don't know what would happen, actually, if you kept the name the same. Um, so let's not do that. <laughs> let's not find out. All right, so now, um, at this point, we should be good. We should be able to save this. Um, I should have mentioned before, you probably want to close Fusion before you do this. I don't believe it'll take effect if Fusion's open. So if you have Fusion open, close it and open it back up. Uh, but what we should be able to do now is... Um, try to create a part. So I'm not an expert in fusion, but uh, I always start with a sketch, which is probably what you should do. And I love top down. So let's do top down and do uh, a new sketch. And I'm gonna just create uh, what'll look like a bolt, basically. Um, so because the diameter of my thread is 67 millimeters, I want the head of my bolt to be a little bit bigger than that. Uh, so we'll do a... Um, why am I in solid? Oops, there we are. Like I said, not an expert at fusion. Uh, so let's do a create. I'll do a circumcised sided polygon. That's a tricky word. And um, this is a pet peeve of mine, but most of the times uh, when you're using circles or creating arcs, it's a diameter. Well, I guess not arcs, but circles in fusion. Uh, but for whatever reason, this is in uh, using a radius. So 67 millimeters, uh, let's say, I don't know, 39 will be, give us something a little bit bigger than 67 millimeters. And then if we create a circle for our bolt, so the threads, this should be about 67. Um, I don't believe this dimension is 100% uh, important. It just needs to be close to the thread. Uh, Fusion will take care of, you know, adjusting that for us. So this is our basic um, sketch of what the bolt will look like. So I'm going to do two extrude operations. Uh, the first one is extruding down to create the head of the bolt. And then the second one will be extruding up to create the, the thread profile. So let's uh, select these two. I'm going to click E for extrude. And because I'm going down, I'm going to go negative. So I'll just go negative two millimeter. doesn't really matter. We're just trying to do something here. <laughs> um, and now I want to go back and... Um, show my sketch again. So uh, right after extrude operation on a new sketch, uh, I notice that it does hide the sketch. Uh, maybe there's a way to prevent that, but again, not the Fusion Expert. Uh, we'll click on the uh, what's going to be our thread profile, and we're going to extrude this up, so it's going to be a positive number. So we'll extrude, and I'll say, I don't know, three millimeters. Too big for a camera, but I want this to be able to be seen. So let's go ahead and uh, extrude it up three millimeters. 
And now if we take a look, we've got a very uh, short profile, but again, this will be fitting on the end of a camera on a filter. So uh, it does have to be pretty short and this will actually be probably be too big. Um, so let's create a thread. So if we go to create and select thread, um, depending on it, there's an internal external threads. This will be an external thread. Um, if you were doing an internal thread, which would be a hole, uh, you would select the inside profile of that hole. Uh, in our case, we're going to select the outside profile of this uh, thread. And um, we see it already defaults to an isometric profile of 68 millimeters, which is pretty close, but it's not what we want. Uh, if we look down here, we've got our isometric camera and it will go to our 67 will snap to it. Now, if we had others, uh, it would find the closest one and snap to it. Um, so if we click that, click modeled. Very important to click modeled because if you're gonna 3D print this, um, modeled actually creates the geometry. Um, if you don't click modeled, it's basically just a picture or representation of what it would look like. Um, it's easier on the CPU and the GPU if it doesn't have to model it, so that's why that's the default. Um, so if we do that and click OK and zoom in, we'll see we've got uh, threads. And um, if this was going to be some sort of uh, photography um, feature, product, gizmo, um, we'd obviously want there to be a hole here. So you can just go in here and create a new sketch, uh, do a circle, and let's step off, uh, I don't know. 63 millimeters is fine. And then we can do an extrude and we'll do a negative extrude. Actually, we can extrude to the object, go down, extrude to the bottom, boom. Now we got a hole in it. So there's our uh, attachment. Um, so yeah, so, you know, not, uh, not impossible. Uh, it certainly was a few hoops to have to jump through. Um, but yeah, I did 3D print this already. It does work. Uh, but I'm going to save that for another video because this thing's already getting too long. Uh, otherwise, uh, thanks for watching. And if you like videos like this, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll also have links in the description below uh, for the different references I use to build this out. So you can go and uh, build your thread or whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time.